What's up, everybody? It's your internet coming at you today, and we have another Marvel Crisis Protocol video. And today, well, we're going to talk about a character that's already been shown, but I think we should talk about him a little bit more um, and, and show him some love, right? It's uh, it's Arnim Zola, and this is all part of the Hydra Wave that's coming out. End of September, I believe, middle or second week of October. I think that's when the Red Skull is coming out because that model is not coming out till October, I believe, from what I understand it. And uh, Artem Zola, Baron Strucker, and Nick Fury will be out, I think, towards the end of September. I could have that wrong, but it is what it is. But uh, let's talk about this model. Cause I actually do like this model a lot. Uh, even though this car has been spoiled and all that stuff, I'll probably talk about it in another video. But right now, let's just go ahead and, and, and uh, talk about this character for a bit. If, any, if anyone can, if you guys can, down below, subscribe to the channel. Like, dislike the video, comment, give me your thoughts on the man that is Zola. And, uh, you know... We'll uh, talk about it from there. You know, I'd have really fun. Yeah, have a lot of fun talking about them. You know, uh, and if you guys can, it helps out the channel, helps it grow. I can do more MCP stuff and all that. I would love them to have more subscribers and, uh, you know, I can get some more stuff done. Um, and, uh, yeah, let's get into it. So, Arnim Zola, I got to say, he is one of my favorite. Uh, when it comes to his model, I like his model a lot. I like the whole clear plex, the clear plastic thing that they have here for him. I don't know if you guys saw that in Dallas Kemp's uh, video when he's uh, building, or not building, but painting Arnim Zola. Like this whole piece here, like right around here, is all plastic, and this is like a clear thing here. And he has, uh, adv he showed some really cool techniques on how to keep that clear when you're doing your painting. Um, so he's got a really cool model. Um, I really like him a lot. My thing is, is like. Um, I wasn't the biggest when it comes to like the Hydra and all that stuff. Like the only character I really like took to was like Red Skull, right? Because it's the Red Skull is the main villain, you know. He's this cool looking character, and his his fig looks amazing. Like the new Red Skull is by far one of the best looking figs in the game. Um, it, along with Arnim Zola too. Like the fig is just absolutely beautiful. I love it. Um, will I be pur purchasing Arnim Zola? I don't know because again, I'm not like I said. The, I, I'm a fan of Red Skull. The rest of them I really don't care for. Uh, but if I want to play Hydra, maybe I will. I don't know yet. We'll have to wait and see on that, right? Uh, but I love his fig. I mean, it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, it's really cool. It's going to be fun to paint. Um, you know, um, and he's got a really cool thing. I like the, the whole Zordon thing he's got going on here. Looks kind of like Zordon with his blue head and all that stuff. Really cool stuff there, you know? Um, so let's go ahead. Let's get into this uh, character card reveal. Um, that we've seen already, but this time we got the injured side, right? So this basically makes him a complete character. Um, so let's go with uh, he's two, three, four across the board for health. He's below average on physical energy. Mystic is average to above. Um, health six, size three. I mean, I'm sorry, threat three, which is good. Uh, size three and move small. He is on a bigger base, um, you know, but um, he, he can get around a little bit. And, um, you know, he's got long range attacks, which helps him a lot. So he doesn't do much of moving around. So, you know, controlling him, you know, m might do some things to him, uh, but not really, right? Because he's got that long range gun and um, he can like, you know, just move once and get there and just shoot you. You know what I mean? He's not completely out of the game. He's going to do something for you. Uh, let's get to his, ra let's get to his uh, gainer, not builder, gainer. Uh, prototype weapons, range four, four dice, uh, no power cost. Before choosing a target, this character chooses whether attack type is physical, energy, mystic, which is really cool. That's really unique. Um, so if you see a character that's really weak against mystic defense, energy, or physical, you can go and make that decision what you want it to be and just choose and just go to town. I really, really love that. I love the option to choose there. Uh, so you can just, whatever, throw all, the, throw all this four dice attack. If they have two, two energy defense, go to town. You should be doing a couple points of damage and, you know, doing what you need to do. But this tech only gains one power, um, which is cool. It's just fine with me. Um, you know, it's four dice. It's consistently giving you something to do. So that's really cool. It's giving you power. So that's awesome. On a wild, I love the wild trigger for Hydra Ingenuity. Uh, after the attack is resolved, when you roll the wild, the defending character gets one of the spawning special conditions. is bleed, shock, slow, or stun. All really good, really effective conditions that I love to put on a character, especially so slow of someone who's you know a long mover, a medium mover, or something like that. <laughs> slow really really hampers them a bit. Shock is you know definitely for those teams that love attrition and and love to have a lot of dice. They have one less dice on attack rolls, which is really cool. And bleed is just like a slow burn on damage. It, it bleed is one of those conditions that sleeps up on you that you really, need. especially when you have a character with one health left and you have to you have a decision to make. It's like okay, how many actions do I really get here? 
and uh, you know either I do my two actions and I die, and you know it's not good for me, or you know I have to shake and like do something else or whatever. So you know, stun we don't have to talk about. Stun is like one of the most debilitating uh, um, conditions in the game. You know, not being able to gain a whole bunch of power is really good. Uh, let's get to a spender, which is two power cost. It's in range three. It's an energy attack, six dice. If this attack deals damage, if the attack is resolved, this character may advance the target character small. This is really strong. This is really good. Um, I shouldn't say really strong. I think this is really good. Um, dealing damage and then being able to advance a character small in any direction is huge. And remember, this is not a push. This is not a throw. This is an advance. So you can advance a character and, and move them off a point or position them closer to you so that maybe, you know, if you're trying to set up an attrition with another character and they need to get rid of him and, you know, Artem Zola didn't do it, you can just advance them towards you and the other character can go ahead and do what he needs to do. And it's only two power calls. It's actually really cheap. Very, very cheap. Um, so I really like this spender a lot. I'm a huge fan of it. Uh, on a wild, it, it gives you a slow, so even better. Like if they're a character that just you know, moves long and you have an issue getting to them, like a black cat or something like that. You just did this. You advance them small towards you. Not only that, you put the wild condition on that character and they now move slow. So you really debilitated that character a lot. Um, or at least mess with their action economy a little bit too. Because uh, if you're a black cat, granted you have like grappling hook and all that stuff, but they would prefer to maybe move long twice and then do that. If you can hamper one of those things, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, like... If they want to move long twice, you no. Know, if they want to move long, then grappling hook. They have to shake, move, then grappling hook, right? So you basically change their uh, order of operations on that character when it comes to stopping them, right? So I'm a fan of that. Experimental enhancements. Uh, during the next attack made by this character, this turn, add two dice to its attack roll. After the attack is off, the vacane uh, contain failures, suffer one damage. Um, I really like this. I, mean, I wish it was a two power cost instead of three, but that's okay. Uh, we should be getting the three power with, I mean, as long as you're doing the build, the gainer and you're sniping people and you're doing really, you know, you're, just, you're constantly attacking or getting attacked. You should have the power, uh, rolling the failure, you know, you'd suffer damage, whatever it is, what it is. Um, not a big, not a huge deal there, but adding two dice to an attack roll, you know, prototype weapons, making it a six to increase your odds to get the wild, um, is, is really, really good. I, I'm a fan of that. Um, or even maybe killing someone. I mean, if you, if you do a six die gainer. And next thing you know, their mystic defense is one for some reason, and you just do a whole bunch of damage and kill them. That's that's a good day, right? Um, or two, or whatever. Hydra engineering. Uh, when while this character, or another character within four of this character is attacking or defending during the modified dice step of the attack, this character may spend up to three power to use this superpower. For each power spent, this character or the allied character may re-roll one of their attack or defense dice. After the attacker is off, the allied character uh, if the allied rolled oh my god. If the allied roll contained one or more fail results, the allied character gains the bleed special condition. So this is basically like Shiri's rerolls almost in a way. Um except there's a drawback. If you roll a failure you gain bleed. Not a huge deal here. I love this a lot. Uh, Rerolling dice is always good. Um, as long as, you know, Zola has the power to do this. It's a, it's a three power cost, right? So you really, really have to be cognizant uh, of your power and all that stuff and how much are you spending and how much do you have to constantly take advantage of the rerolls and all that stuff. So um, I, I, really good stuff here. I like it. I mean, adding rerolls to any character to, to, for some consistency or to fish for more hits or a wild. I'm always a fan of that, right? I, mean, I love rerolls, um, you know, so they're really good. Uh, scientific hubris, basically a Doc Ock thing. And here's the thing about scientific hubris. A, playing Doc Ock, a lot of people forget about that, that there's another way that character can gain power. And right now with this character here, I can guarantee you there might be people shorting themselves on power every time they do this because I, I can't, stress enough how many how many times this is missed like in games and like people just forget about power. i forget it too i forget it's even a thing on on the card um so maybe this time around with maybe with this character people don't forget and he has a lot more power than i <laughs> than we originally intended you know when he's rolling dice and he's doing his thing and you know he's gaining extra power uh you know he should have enough power to do you know with adding up scientific hubris and the gainer and all that stuff and then getting attacked and all that. He should have enough power to pull off hydro engineering a couple times. 
um, or maybe you know maybe once or twice or whatever, and uh, he should be fine, right? The point is, I don't think he'll be super power starved. He has ways to gain power. People just have to remember these little triggers, which is always people always seem to forget that. You know what I'm saying? So it's one of those things I have to be look out for when I play this character. Um, so we'll get to the injured side. Nothing changes. He's the same. He's immune to bleed and poison, which is cool. Um, you could play him on the Terrigen Mist, which would be awesome. Just have Park on one or whatever. You know what I mean? He could just you know not take the poison and just you know get you that point. Granted, he might die, but uh, it's still one of those things that he could do. Um, but that's it for Arnim Zola. Um, you know, like I said, I already talked about him before. I just wanted to get this video out there because this is out there. Also, I do want to get this out there too. Um, uh, I am trying to get my hands currently right now on another Malekith. Um, if I do, I will end up do doing another raffle for the Malekith. I'm trying to get my hand on, t I'm trying to get my hands on two extra Malekith right now. I'm looking, it look, looks like it's just going to be one Malekith at this point in time. Um, and if I do, I will probably do a raffle for him next Wednesday, next Wednesday night. Um, it'll be the same deal. Um, hey, uh, a dollar gets you a, a dollar gets you a raffle. Ten gets you ten. Max is ten. Um, basically, uh, if you want, I just want to go ahead and do that. Feel, uh, feel free. Um, if not, uh, whatever it is, what it is. Um, right now, I I don't have the Malekith, right? So I'm trying to get that Malekith so that way I can do this. Um, you know, and, um, I can just do that for the community and, uh, get a Malekith out there to somebody. So, uh, that'd be really cool. I'll definitely do another video on that. Um, sometime this week, you know, when Malekith comes out and if I can get my hands on a second one, which is the goal, um, I will definitely do a raffle for him. If I can get a, if I can get two extra Malekith, um, I will definitely get that done. Um, and we can do two raffles that night for two Malekiths. Uh, but right now just be prepared to probably just be one Malekith. And, um, you know, it should be fun, man. That, I mean, I'll just I'll do a live stream and, uh, you know, we can have some fun. We can talk about the game. We can talk about MCP. Um, you know, we can play some games. We can go do some roster building, you know, all that kind of stuff. I want to have fun with the community and uh, at the same time, you know, raise a little bit of money, um, you know, and then get the Malekith out there to people. And, uh, yeah, you know what I mean? It uh, should be fun. All right, guys, that's it. Uh, have a wonderful, blessed day out there. Um, you know, tell me your thoughts down below about Arnim Zola. What do you think he lies where do you think what do you think where would you play him and what affiliations um are you excited for the hydra list the hydra team that's coming out me i'm mostly excited for red skull i like that character a lot i do like zola um will i be playing the hydra affiliation a lot we'll see i don't know yet um i'd have to take a look at everything you know because i'm not the hugest fan of hydra right i like red skull but zola is like whatever to me um but you never know i might change my mind and just play those characters play that team a lot and i'm just having the time of life um we'll see all right guys that's it uh definitely let me know your thoughts down below like i said guys comment like dislike subscribe to the channel we'll have more mcp content coming up and uh, keep an eye out for the video for the live stream for next week uh when we're hopefully giving away a malekith or two we'll see what happens okay uh have a wonderful blessed day out there keep guys keep playing mcp and i'll see you in the next one bye